object storage. This is a storage architecture that's gaining more and more interest these days from customers of all types of industries and sizes. But what is object storage? Object storage is actually something we all use in our day-to-day -day lives and we probably don't even realize it. When we post updates or accomplishments to our professional network online or when we post uh, status or pictures of our kids or what we're doing with our families and friends to some of our social networks, all that information is, is probably going to be in an object store somewhere. So what is an object store or what is an object for that matter? An object is a piece of data uh, with its associated metadata. So what is metadata? Metadata is data about that piece of data. Uh, and that can be things like how old that piece of data is, when it was last accessed, what size it is, all sorts of different parameters like that. And those two pieces, the metadata and the data together, is what makes an object. This, these object stores, as I mentioned, have to be able to, to take many, many pieces of data or objects, as well as handle varying sizes, whether it's just a quick one-line update of here's what I did today, or it's a, it's a video of you and your kids swimming in the lake. It needs to be able to handle a lot of that kind of information. So companies are turning to these kind of things, uh, to object stores, because of the, the scale that I mentioned. Uh, object stores, by their definition, it's, it's a very flat organizational structure of the object ID, so it can be accessed very quickly, even when it gets to the kind of scale we're talking about. It's got each object has its own unique ID. That's how it's accessed, so it's very fast and quick. And the reason companies have begun looking at objects for their larger installations of whatever the, the type of data is that they're managing, um, again, mostly files, they're realizing that their file systems aren't going to work anymore, and that's why they're looking at object stores. File systems have been great and still are great for more smaller installations, and again, I mean smaller as a petabyte or below. Uh, but what happens about that petabyte or millions of, or above number of files is that the file system begins to slow down and there's some performance implications to just be able to hunt and access the, the file of the data that you're looking to find. So that's where the object approach really begins to make sense. Now at the same time, the last several years, software-defined storage has really kind of also riv risen in prominence and become more, um, more interesting to people uh, for, all, for all sorts of different workloads, one of which is object though. Uh, why, why it's a nice mate to an object store or an object kind of an implementation is because it's very cost effective, built on co commodity servers, which are bought, can be bought kind of incrementally, meaning you don't have to buy all the servers today that you're going to build on, like you do a file system storage appliance that maybe you'll use 5% of its total capacity today and then over time fill it up, but you're making that one investment today. Software-defined storage is built on commodity hardware, and you can, you can buy that you know, piecemeal by piecemeal over time as you need it. So you don't have to be buying a huge petabyte worth of installation and just hoping to fill it over time. You can grow it incrementally over time. Um, Red Hat has, of course, software-defined storage, uh, one of which is Red Hat Ceph Storage. Red Hat Ceph Storage is built on the Ceph Community open source product. Um, Ceph from the very beginning has been an object store. It was made that way uh, beginning in its, its earliest uh, uh, creation in 2007. The main parts of Ceph are Rados as its foundation, then the Librados layer, the Rados gateway, Rados block device, and the Ceph file system. But going back to Rados, Rados is an object store. Uh, that's actually what the acronym stands for, Reliable Autonomous Distributed Object Store. And it was made that way from the beginning. It was, uh, Ceph from the very beginning was conceived to be a web scale type storage infrastructure. That's, that's what it was built from, from the very beginning, but it, it's kind of gotten forgotten over the years a little bit. Most people have been using it for block or OpenStack kind of installations. Um, but it is an object store. Uh, I want to highlight that. The other thing I would mention and remind people is this Rados gateway piece here. Um, is the main interface for object access. And there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can do it through the S3 interface or the Swift interface, if you're familiar with the OpenStack framework, or even potentially a custom API or a custom uh, access method you use based on the APIs that are provided. Um, so that's definitely very key and makes it very um, appealing for object storage uh, installations. Other things to keep in mind for object storage installations is Ceph's been um, in existence since 2007, and soon after that it was open sourced and created as a community project. So it's had a lot of time to kind of harden and mature over the years. 
it's got data protection availability features to it that um, many enterprises and customers are going to demand. So it's really evolved and matured enough uh, to a point now where it's, it's ideal for these kind of um, object storage installations that we've been talking about. So it's definitely something you want to consider as you're looking to build out your object store. Uh, I've only touched on kind of the tip of the iceberg with what we've been talking about here today, but for more information, go to redhat.com slash storage and uh, look at all the object storage information we've got out there or even read up on our blog for more information. Thank you.